uh, welcome to uh, testing Chemnitz with uh, Jax, as uh, Soran said. So let's jump right into it. Uh, my name is uh, Christoph. I'm working as a software engineer at Red Hat and uh, dealing with middleware integration, uh, everything around Camel, Camel K, Chemnitz, and also on the testing side, uh, Citrus and Yux. And I'm happy to be here to tell you about uh, the possibilities about testing. So um, as Soran said, there have been a few presentations already about Chemnitz, but I want to uh, very briefly go over it and uh, tell you what it's all about so that everybody's on the same page. So what is Chemnitz? Um, basically, it came out of the Camel K uh, project. And uh, yeah, a year ago, it was introduced. Chemnitz uh, yeah, stays for Camel Route Snippet. and uh, Basically, the idea is to um, give um, yeah routes uh, to the to the user. So not everybody in the world is a camel expert and knows how to write uh, camel routes, but camelets can do the heavy lifting for you, and you can use the camelet um, when you need an integration from A to B, or if you do a transformation from from A to B. And this is the basic uh, idea. It was started with uh, Knative, but uh, it's for general purpose connectors, which also is uh, shown in the Chemnet catalog. So it's a constantly growing uh, group of, of Chemnets provided either by the uh, Apache Software Foundation, so the community, or by, by Red Hat, uh, the, the integration team. But both uh, catalogs are uh, growing, and uh, you can use these uh, Chemnets in your, in your project. So these are the uh, Chemnet catalogs. Um, you can uh, visit there and see what's what's in there already. And of course, uh, contributions are always uh, welcome. So we want to have this uh, growing constantly and um, um, yeah, have Chemnets for both sources and sinks for almost everything that Camel supports. This is the OpenShift integration uh, thing. It's basically the same uh, yeah, catalog or the same same idea. So we have different Chemnet types. Um, we have sources, we have sinks, and we have actions. So the source would um, grab some events from the outside world. Here in the example, it's an AWS SQS uh, source, and it grabs the events and uh, pulls it into your platform as a source. And uh, the sync is the other way around. So you have some events uh, in, in the platform, and you want to expose these events uh, to the outside world to Dropbox, to Twitter, to um, whatever you whatever um, you like and what is supported right now. So this would be the sync. Um, the action is something that you can um, yeah write in between a source and the sync as a step. So um, you could convert the the message body to a, a PDF document, as as this example is here. So these are the, the three different types uh, today in our session, we will deal with uh, sources and sinks, and we also will see a little bit of actions. Um, and uh, all of these will be um, part of the Chemnet that we want to verify in our test. So basically, a Chemnet is a custom resource definition. So you write this uh, on your own, or you use one of these uh, provided in the Chemnet uh, catalog. And basically, um, when you apply this uh, custom resource to your cluster Kubernetes, um, then you are ready to use the, the, the Camelot when you have Camel K also in, installed on your cluster. So it's a very declarative um, approach. You uh, declare the Camelot. It has uh, some properties that the user might uh, need to set. So and uh, then the, the Camelot um, does its work uh, as a source, as I said. Um, pulling in events uh, into the platform or as a sync, um, pushing out uh, the events. You can use the Camlet uh, in different uh, areas. You can use it right away in your Camel um, domain-specific language. So you can say from Camlet and use the Camlet component to use uh, such a uh, Camlet source. And you give the, the properties that the Camlet um, defines, and uh, you are ready. To, to use it in, in your um, Java DSL or Groovy or whatever you like. 
The same um, you can do without, uh, so not everybody has background for developing or for writing Ruby code or Java code. The same you can do with a pure Camlet binding custom resource. So here you would define the source and the sync and uh, just link uh, these together. So here in this example, we uh, use the Telegram source and uh, we uh, link it or bind it into a uh, memory channel in on, on, on Knative. So um, this is another option that you can use a camlet. And uh, the third option is to use the camel uh, CLI. Um, so you don't have to write this YAML file on your own. You can just say camel bind telegram source channel uh, messages. You give the property, which is the authorization token, and then you are ready and uh, the, the camel K integration and the camlet binding will just be created and uh, will run on your cluster. So it's kind of uh, um, a good evolution backwards. Yeah, um, In the past, you would have to write a lot of Java code in, in a project and run these or, or package these into a jar file and execute this. Um, right now, you just have to write your Camlet binding or you just have to copy and paste this um, CLI. And uh, you can uh, have a running integration from Telegram to Knative. So this is the basic uh, idea. Um, you can bind these camlets to different uh, destinations. So um, just for an example, you can bind it to an Knative uh, eventing broker or a channel. You could do the very same, um, use the very same camlet uh, to bind it to a Kafka topic. And you can also use the binding to bind it to a uh, service which runs on some HTTP uh, URI. So these are um, the the basic um, the basic destinations that you that, that you can bind a, a camlet to, or you can bind to another camlet. Yeah, you can bind one camlet to another camlet, which we will do later on in the in the demo. You can you can see this. So now that we are all on the same page about uh, camlets, hopefully, um, let's uh, ask the question, how can I test these camlets? So it's a very declarative approach. Um, as I said, you write this uh, camlet uh, in, in YAML or in a small um, domain-specific language uh, file, and then you just yeah um, bind it to, to together with, with destinations and you have a running integration. So how can I test these uh, kind of, 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 of camlets? And what we um, yeah, came up with is uh, called YAX. It's a framework, um, open source framework uh, with Apache license um, that provides a way to test these camlets and uh, camel K in general, also with a very declarative approach. So, so the approach for us was pretty much the same. We didn't want to write a lot of uh, code and we didn't want to have a lot of um, yeah, infrastructure setup for the for the project. We just wanted to have a single file where you put in your test logic and you apply this test uh, file um, in the cluster and then you have a running test. So this was the same idea that we had with uh, KMLK and, and Chemnets to also provide this uh, in the in the testing. So it was born out of KMLK, but um, being that being said, it's not for Camel K only. You can use YAX for any workload that you have on your Kubernetes cluster. Um, is it an HTTP service or is it a FTP uh, service or do you exchange data with um, something something different? Um, you can use you can use YAX. So behind YAX, there are two other frameworks. Um, Cucumber is the first one. You may have heard of it um, from the behavior-driven development, which is the BDD that uh, is here mentioned. So behavior-driven development deals with um, a clear vision of writing your tests um, to say, I have a, a, I have a given certain context. I want to, um, yeah, to, to, to fire some events or to trigger some, some logic. And then uh, on the other hand, I have an outcome that I want to verify. So this given when then syntax, you may have heard of it. This is the behavior driven development concept and Cucumber uh, implements this concept in uh, different languages, also in Java. So this was for us the, the first um, um, yeah, um, basic framework. And the second one um, behind Yax is Citrus. 
And Citrus is a framework that provides a lot of components to connect with different messaging transports like uh, HTTP, um, JMS, um, Kafka, and so on. And it also provides a powerful validation mechanism for different payloads, JSON, XML, plain text, and so on. So both of these frameworks are open source, uh, Apache licensed, and uh, fit uh, quite well into the into the picture. And uh, Yax puts on top of these two frameworks and um, provides the whole um, execution in, in the cloud or on the Kubernetes cluster. So we will see this later on. This is a um, typical Yax test. So as I said, you should be writing only this single file and uh, then be able to run this test. And in order to do that, um, Yax provides a set of predefined um, so-called steps. And uh, each given, each when, or each then uh, statement that you see here is um, implemented in, in Yax and provides the functionality when you use this uh, syntax here. So you um, are bound to uh, the wording here. So you have to use given URL and uh, give the give the URL to define the service URL. And you have to say, uh, given wait for the URL to return uh, 200 OK in order to execute the steps and the implementation that lies uh, behind. But with this given set of, of uh, steps, you are ready to just write this file and Yax is able to uh, run this file and execute the test and verify um, this to-do service, which is uh, obviously an HTTP service. So for the uh, scenario health check, we are calling this uh, destination URL. We wait for it to return 200 and uh, OK. And then we check also that the path, uh, the resource path on slash health uh, is uh, healthy, which is also um, uh, given when uh, 200 OK is, is returned. And then um, we have another scenario for creating a task. So we um, yeah, post a request body Give, given the HTTP request body, this is a JSON request body. And then when we say when send post on this resource, then uh, receive HTTP 201 uh, created. So this is the, the um, deal that, we, um, that you have to do. You have to use the wording and the steps that uh, YAX provides uh, in all its modules. So here we basically use the HTTP module from, from YAX, but there are um, a lot of different uh, other modules that you can use. And uh, if you are not happy with, with this, or if you want to add some custom uh, steps, you can also do this. Yeah, you can, you are free to add custom customized steps and uh, add other implementations um, that you can mix in here. But um, for, for the normal user, you, um, First, look for a given um, YAX implementation. If there is a step that you can use, you just have to use the syntax here, and you can uh, use it without to have uh, writing code for setting up this this post request. Okay, YAX in action. So you write this feature file that we have seen before with the given when then syntax, uh, following the behavior driven development concepts, and then you can just run this uh, integration feature, this, this uh, feature file with uh, the YAX CLI. You can say YAX run integration.feature, and uh, then the YAX CLI will create a custom resource of type test, put it into the uh, Kubernetes cluster and the YAX operator running there will just um, translate this feature into a running Java environment and execute this uh, feature with Cucumber. So this is the basic uh, idea. Um, again, we wanted to have this as a very a declarative uh, approach. You write this single feature file and you are able to run the test um, in the Kubernetes cluster. So I have uh, mentioned a lot of modules. So these are the modules that uh, we have right now in, in YAC. So you can connect to JMS, you can connect to Kafka, um, use Open API, for instance, uh, create Kubernetes resources, the, the YAX HTTP module, um, we have seen that in this little example and a lot of other things. And uh, today I also want to talk about the YAX CAMEL-K and CAMEL integration. So 
as I said, Yux came from from these projects, so we have some uh, integrations with Camel K and Camel in order to test the 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 Camlets and the uh, Camel K integrations. But um, you can also use all the others and uh, don't have to to stick with with Camel K uh, in 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 Yux. So this is the architecture from a uh, very high level. As I already said, we have on the left hand side the Yux uh, command line interface. And we have a YUX operator, which is installed on your cluster. And once the um, operator receives custom resources of type test, then it creates a pod and uh, prepares the uh, Java runtime with Maven in it and um, um, executes the, the Java um, test uh, written in Cucumber. So this is uh, the basic um, setup that we have. And on the very right hand side, you have the system under test, which is also uh, running as a pod or providing a service in the cluster or is a camlet that uh, also is, is running uh, on the cluster. And that being said, we have uh, some plenty of time to go into the, the demo. I want to show you uh, a little example. Hope you can see that. And um, I have prepared a Slack uh, Camlet. So uh, let's jump into the Camlet code for, for a while. So this is the official Slack source that we have in the catalog. And it um, listens for channels on a, on a Slack uh, installation and listens for um, messages that are sent to the channel. And every time a message appears on this channel, then the source will grab the event and um, provide it into uh, the the sync that is linked to the to the camlet. So um, the Slack source is of type source, and it provides some properties um, like the Slack channel and the authorization token. So this is a user token or a bot token or an application token uh, in in Slack that you can use to connect to the Slack uh, application and to uh, just grab the messages from the channel. And these two um, need to be provided by the user when uh, using the Camlet. And once this is uh, done, then there's a little flow. Yeah, We use uh, Camel components in the background to grab the events from the Slack channel. And we provide this as a JSON um, payload to the Camlet sync. So this is the, the Slack uh, source. And if we want to write a test for this Slack source, we need to uh, do a few things to set up. Um, we need to make sure that the Slack source Camlet is available on the cluster. And we need to provide a Camlet uh, binding or a short um, Camel K integration that uses this uh, Camlet source. And then in a third step, we have to provide a message on a channel to see if the Camlet is working and uh, grabs the message from the channel and provides this uh, to a sync. And this is what I have uh, written in here. So this is my uh, feature file for uh, Yux. So it's the Slack Camlet uh, feature. It has some, some background for, for polling the Camel K resources. Um, uh, we will see this later. And uh, here it starts to create the Camel K resources. So uh, we load the Camlet, which is the Slack source uh, dot Camlet YAML. You can also um, yeah say, the test shouldn't load this. It should be um, given as a uh, prerequisite in the in the um, on the cluster. But this test is is just loading the, the Slack source to be sure that the Slack source is available. It loads the Camel K integration Slack to log Groovy, and this is something that you can do to just uh, use the Camlet. I have written a very short uh, Camel K integration that uses the Camlet directly, the Slack source Camlet gives the uh, channel and gives the token. So the next uh, question would be, where um, do we get this channel and uh, uh, also this, this token? Because um, the token is quite sensitive data. And um, you can do this with uh, secrets in uh, Kubernetes. So I created a secret, um, which is called uh, Slack Credentials. And this is available uh, uh, in the namespace. And then you can um, label the secret to be able to use it in, in your um, YUX test. So the labeling is um, usually done in a 
so-called pre-script. Uh, so pre previously to running the test, uh, this prepare secret script is uh, executed. Um, right now, um, I don't want wanted to execute it on my local machine, so I have uh, added a condition. So if there's a uh, CI environment, then this prepare secret um, shell script should be should be executed. And if we have a look into the prepare secret shell script here, um, we just use uh, kubectl to create this secret uh, from a credentials uh, properties file, and um, we label this secret with a label called YAX uh, test configuration and it says select credentials. And every test can use this uh, secret and uh, bind every um, property which is given in the in the properties file when saying um, here config runtime secret is select credentials. So this will automatically bind the secret file as a volume into the test pod so that you can um, use the properties um, with this uh, dollar um, curly bracket um, syntax slack dot token. And if we jump in here, of course, you have to provide the slack channel and the slack uh, token, which is kind of uh, sensitive data. So you can also um, make it once in your test environment cluster um, to create the secret um, with the credentials that you have for, for this Slack um, application and then let the tests just use this token to um, connect to the, to the application and connect to the channel. So I've uh, prepared this already in my uh, Kubernetes cluster. We can have a short look at the dashboard. So if we go here to secrets, where are we? Um, here are the secrets. You see here are the Slack credentials, and I have um, labeled it with the configuration Slack credentials. So every time a test starts and wants to use this Slack credentials, then it's automatically bound into into the pod, and it it should be should be working. So let's jump back into um, my IDE and let's move on. So um, we made sure to run the CamelK integration, which uses the CamLet. And once the um, CamelK integration is running, it will constantly listen for new messages on the channel. And every time a message is arriving on the channel, it will just log it to the to the pod log. And um, then here we just wait for the CamelK integration uh, to be running. And then we need to trigger a Slack message. And we do this with a simple HTTP request. We send a Slack message, um, which um, should say some announcement for a release, yeah, so that something is released. And uh, we go to slack.com and we have the auth authorization header, which is also the Slack token. And we use content type JSON to um, post the channel message on, on this channel. So here we have the uh, message that uh, this variable defines. And we want to send this uh, message as a HTTP post. So we send this post to slash API slash uh, chat post message. And once we posted this, we want to receive the HTTP 200 uh, OK so that the Slack API um, received our message. And then the KMLK integration should print in the log um, our message that we just sent to the, to the Slack channel. So with this setup, we um, had the camlet, we had the camel K integration using the camlet, and we sent out the Slack message to trigger the camlet logic. And then we sh we verify the outcome by looking into the pod log and the pod log should print um, the message because um, right in here, I say from camlet select source to log info and this prints um, to, the, to the pod logs. So, Long story short, let's just uh, run this um, this uh, test. So I can say um, yux run. I have to give the um, correct feature file. And then if we just execute this, this will create a new um, custom resource in the Kubernetes cluster. It will create a pod that has a JVM runtime in it, executing the Cucumber test and uh, yeah, just 
executing the, the feature file that, that we have seen. Hopefully it's working, yeah. So now it's it's started. It's using also uh, Citrus to send out uh, the, the messages. And everything that we had in this feature file is right now uh, executing and it's connecting to the Slack API, sending out the, the message and then hopefully we will have a successful test. Yeah, so let's make it a little bit bigger here. So here you can see all these uh, steps that we had and they are all green, which says that uh, everything was, was okay and that we have a running test uh, with the Slack source. So let's move on and um, have some sync logic. Um, I have created a mail sync because uh, I want in the very end, I want to not, um, not only log these uh, messages, but I also want to send these messages via uh, to a mail uh, endpoint, uh, creating a, a mail message from, from the Slack channel. So I have uh, created a camlet of uh, type sync, and this is the mail sync. It's not al already in the camlet catalog, so I created it on my on my own. And it will simply define some properties like the protocol, SMTP or um, POP3 or um, IMAP, um, the host, the mail host, the mail server, a host, the port of the mail server, um, the mail sender from the mail recipient uh, to and the subject. And the actual mail content is the, the message that I'm uh, putting in into the, the camlet. And this camlet will just use the uh, camel K mail, uh, the camel mail component to just send out this uh, um, as, a, as a mail content. So this is a sync. So we create some uh, event and uh, the, the camlet will fire the, the message to a mail server. And if you want to test this, we want to provide or we have to provide some kind of mail server. Yeah, because the camlet will connect to a mail server and will uh, send out ma uh, mails to that. So uh, if we want to te test this, let's have a look into the mail sync uh, feature. Um, with uh, Citrus and with the underlying uh, framework of, of Citrus, you can create a very, very simple mail server. It's a mail server that runs uh, basically in memory in uh, the JVM and that exposes a port and uh, uh, clients can use this mail server to send uh, some mails to it. And I loaded this mail server with this little uh, Groovy file in here. So this is my mail server in Citrus. Um, it simply says uh, mail server, gives it a name, gives it a port and says auto start true. So every time the test starts in the very same port, we will create a mail server listening on port um, 2222. And uh, incoming requests um, will be accepted by this mail server and we can verify this in, in the test. So in order to do this, we have to expose our port to the outside world. So um, if the mail server is running inside of the test port, we have to expose this as a service. And uh, we do this uh, with this step here, given create Kubernetes service mail server, with port mapping and we um, uh, map this uh, 25 port to the uh, uh, port 2222, which is running inside of the, of the port. Once we have this mail server, we can again load our mail sync camlet. We can create a camlet binding that uses the mail sync. This is a timer to mail. So this timer to mail camlet binding will just periodically send out emails yeah, with uh, a, a message, with a static message. I want to just have this because um, I want to test the mail sync. So I want to periodically um, use this Camlet sync um, in, in, my, in my Camlet binding and send out emails. And once I have this uh, ready, I can verify the mail message that should, received, uh, should be received by the mail server that I have here uh, in, my, in my pod because um, the, the service is exposed as a Kubernetes service. So everything running on Kubernetes can use this service to connect to my pod that uh, has the mail server in here. And the mail server receives the, the body and in Citrus, 
um, you can verify the incoming uh, mail request with this uh, JSON body. So I can verify the incoming mail message with a from, with a to, uh, with the subject and with the body content and uh, so on. And be, be sure that the mail sync um, worked as expected to send out to send out the email. Let's just run this test and uh, hope you can see that. Let's once again say you have to run. Right now I'm going to the mail sync and use the mail sync feature and uh, run this. So this is uh, basically doing the same. It creates the test as a custom resource and the operator will run it. But right now we will also start this little mail server as part of the test and expose this Kubernetes service on the cluster. And the Camlet will use this service in order to send its uh, its mails to, to this uh, little server. And um, hopefully when everything is, is, is green, we also were able to test this uh, mail sync camlet. Looking good. So maybe let's have a failing test to see that uh, everything is working as expected. Um, let's say here, um, happy Apache con as the as the content. So this should be failing right now because um, the mail message is definitely not um, having this as a as a content. So I rerun this test and see uh, a failing test. And this then uses the underlying Citrus framework capabilities to verify and validate JSON content. So with uh, Citrus, you can verify JSON and XML and plain text and uh, very powerful validation Every field and every content that you have can be um, very specifically um, verified, either with uh, JSON path or with a template um, that I'm using right now. And um, the test is red. Gives a lot of uh, information. Let me see if we can have this here. So this uh, was was failing, and it says values not equal for entry uh, content expected happy Apache con, but was this announcement that we uh, usually send uh, to the to the Camlet. So this is uh, really working. So um, we are quite sure that the mail content is as expected, and bringing this all together is to have the Slack source and bind it to the mail sync. So every time somebody sends a mail to this Slack channel, we want to receive this um, on, on a mail. And this is the, the next uh, test that I have prepared. So this is the Slack to mail uh, feature. And this Slack to mail uses a Camlet binding, which uses the Slack source as a source. And as a sync, it uses my um, newly written mail sync camlet as a as a sync, and in between I have a so-called action as a camlet, which extracts the field of the Slack message um, and uh, extracts the field text, because the Slack channel message is providing a lot of information, like the channel ID and the user ID and everything around it. But I'm only interested in the text that the user has given in the in the Slack channel, and I want to use this text as a mail body and not the whole uh, Slack um, JSON body. So I use this uh, camlet here, um, the extract field action uh, camlet, and I extract the JSON field text and put it into the into the sync. And if we have a look into the feature, it's pretty much the same. It also creates the mail server because at the very end we want to receive a mail. And uh, it sends then the Slack message. Once everything is set up and the uh, camlets are um, up and running, um, it, sets, uh, it sends the Slack message. And uh, the Slack message should be catched by the Slack source camlet in the camlet binding, verified uh, or transformed, and uh, sent to this mail sync. And uh, then the next step would be to verify the mail message content. So this is the complete picture. 
both camlets, Slack source and mail sync are uh, verified right here. So let's just run this and then um, maybe have uh, another five minutes for, for, uh, for, for questions. Let me just uh, say Slack, Slack to mail, Slack to mail feature. Maybe once this is, uh, while this is running, have a look into the Kubernetes dashboard where we can see all the, all the pods and the jobs that uh, Yax was uh, creating. So every test um, is creating a job and um, the job has one pod. And we can see this was the failing test um, that we had before. And these were the, the other tests that we have executed. You can also jump right into this and uh, of course have a look into the um yeah log output um in in the dashboard so um the the test outcome is also reflected uh, in the status so if a test is failing you will have the status error a little bit bigger and uh, we can also see that the slack to mail uh, test is running right now it should be should be finished terminating let's jump back and see ah it's it's already finished so this was successful and this uh pretty much completes uh what i have to to show you um maybe have a short um round table for for questions are there any hi christoph so i don't see any questions so let me ask one uh, if people wanted to start with Yux and with Citrus Framework, can you give them some pointers, perhaps to the documentation or some examples in addition to this presentation? Yeah, that's a very good question. So this pretty much is uh, my last slide here. So if you want to start out with it, um, yeah, um, go to the to the demo, try it out. Um, it's running on on my local Minikube. Um, it's it's uh, pretty easy to to set this set this up and uh, yeah of course GitHub is a, always a good um, way for asking questions opening issues um, there's also a, a chat and of course if you like it then um, share a star and uh, if there are no uh, questions anymore then maybe I can show you some uh, in in the last two minutes some other things that I have um, like. Uh, writing a custom step. So writing a custom step in uh, YAX is pretty easy. You have to just um, write this uh, little Java class, which um, uses the uh, Cucumber uh, given uh, when then uh, annotations for defining the, the syntax. Yeah, so I wrote this little mail step where I say, uh, given a mail server port and given I start the mail server, um, which then just starts this uh, Citus uh, mail server in, in, in Java. And uh, you can also write some verifying uh, Java code if you don't want to um, use the predefined YAX uh, steps, you can write your own steps in here. Use the given when then annotations from Cucumber and put in some, some, some Java code to, to implement the the step and uh, once you have done this you can upload your extension into the kubernetes cluster i can just um, show you this one if i have still some time so you can say yux upload and say um, this extension steps what this is doing it's building the um, whole um maven project that i'm i'm using here it compiles my mail steps class and puts it into a jar file and this jar file is then uploaded into the kubernetes cluster and made available as a, a step extension and once i have done this i can write another feature file and just use the given start mail server step that i just uh, wrote i can also jump into this so this is my custom code that I provided in here in this project, and I can uh, use it in my feature file because I have uploaded this into the uh, Kubernetes cluster and then use this um, little step in here. So, and uh, maybe also last, very last thing is um, I can also use this in uh, any 
CI environment because at the very end, it's just using this uh, YAX uh, CLI. There are some GitHub actions available to install. Um, let me see this. Uh, this is here. So there's a GitHub action that you can use to install YAX, which gives you the YAX uh, command line client. And then at the very end, you can say YAX run and run your tests from GitHub uh, actions in a CI environment, for instance. So this is, uh, I think, time's up. If there are no questions, then yes. thank you very much. Thanks, Christoph. This was an awesome demo uh, and an awesome presentation. Uh, as always, people neglect testing. So <laughs> this is an excellent way to test end-to-end -end your camlets. And yeah, thank you for presenting. Thank you. Have a nice day.